Our story begins in the middle of the 40s, when a hopeful young soldier called Sam... Oh, uh, we're not doing that? Our story begins in the middle of last Tuesday, where a hopeless young freeloader called Sam is sipping a fancy cup of coffee with a name nobody can pronounce. Sam was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. But not the actual spoon that he has in his mouth now. That is a different spoon. But a figurative spoon that represents all the wealth and attention that he has been receiving from his parents. And their butlers. And their butler's parents. You're a douche, aren't you, Sam? Blink twice if yes. <laughs> he can't hear me. This is Sam's girlfriend, also not being heard by Sam. She's mad at Sam for his lack of responsibility, produced by his large wealth. She also mentions the fact that Sam has forgotten her birthday for the third year in a row. Sam's girlfriend is upset. As with most rich and famous brats, Sam does not pick up on that. Instead, he decides to lay this gem. Things just work out for me, baby. I can't just run around and do stuff. I'd end up with a limp spine then, or something. Sam's girlfriend does something she should have done a long time ago. <laughs> Sam is laying unconscious on the floor. He gathers his strength and makes an effort to get up. Then he makes another effort to stand up straight. Sam is hit in the head so hard, he has to remind himself how to walk. He takes a right step. Then he takes a left step. Good job, Sam! You're very good at existing. How dare you startle my child! An overprotective mother hurls a cup of coffee in Sam's face. He has to blink rapidly to regain his vision. Say something, Harold! Oh, gee. How is our son going to become a respected politician if he can't fend for himself? I thought he was going to become an actor. Oh, what's the difference? Sam remembers the one thing he's good at, paying for stuff. So he turns around to pay for his beverage. Sam pays the guy 500 euros, barely covering the coffee. Thanks for the tip, douchebag. Sam decides to hurl another 500 at the guy. Not such a douchebag after all. Sam is hurling stacks of 500s left and right. He has no perception of money. Sam is about to spend his whole weekly allowance on tipping a barista named Tony. He really was hit hard in the head. Holy feces. I'll just start my own coffee shop. Once again, Sam makes someone quit their job by tipping them too much. So long. <laughs> Sam spends a decade making his way out the door, which is pretty good for a guy. As Sam waggles outside, he sees his girlfriend on the other side of the road. Sam pulls himself together and rushes towards his soon-to-be ex-girlfriend, this is when a septic tank truck approaches Sam with an average speed of 90 kilometers per hour. The impact renders him eight types of dead.
Who knew a bottle to the face would result in such a terrible fate for Sam? But a bottle won't be the only thing that will meet Sam's face today. There's also the ground in hell. Sam does not like being dead a single bit. He also hates the eerie feeling of not having any cash on him. Then he finds seven glowing notes in his pocket. That makes him feel reasonably better. The source of the sound is none other than obliteration and oblivion, extermination and extinction, the end, decease and demise, the grim reaper, death. He's trying to do a kickflip on a skateboard and is dressed like a douchebag for some reason. In his coarse, horrifying voice, he lays this on Sam. Yo, yo, yo! You must be Sam from the info I was provided. Then he takes a second look at Sam and his eye sockets widen. Holy feces, dude! Your soul be like a diamond! Let me cut you a deal that we can seal. Reels? Aight, man, it decided. The notes in Sam's pocket are something called a shred of life. Every soul has at least one, and it is the biggest unit in Hell's currency, followed by quality of life, school of life, sound of life, meaning of life, and thug life. If you give me your shreds, I'll resurrect your face and get you out of Hell on one condition. You'll have to survive 24 hours with a handicap I choose under my supervision, bro. Sam decides to check out the rest of Hell before doing any deals with supernatural beings. Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... Ooh, a plumber. That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. All right, that sounds fair. Yes. Sam notices that the souls that get into hell are forced to get a job and become functioning souls of society. For most people, this is okay, but for Sam, it's horrifying. He hurls his shreds at death like he's never hurled piles of money before. Why, hello there, dear sir. Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... Ooh, a minesweeper! That'll be all your shreds, dear sir. Could be worse. Whatever. Kinda sounds fun. <laughs> Why, hello there, dear sir! Let's see if we can find a job for you. You get to be... a struggling freelance artist. Oh my. He keeps the last shred for the next time he meets the Gatekeeper of Hell. Whenever that's going to be. Hehe. <laughs> Aight, bro. I only get to do these deals annually. But if you really want to live in biz, you have to do it manually. Also, I will stop speaking in rhymes now. Sam has just traveled through time, space, and logic, and finds himself fully alive, and more importantly, rich again. His joy is only dimmed by the fact that he can't move at all. This is when he shows up. Death. Yo, yo, yo! Oh, God, you look horror. I mean, <laughs> you look great, bro. Uh, you be okay? Can you hear me? Um, blink twice if yes. Oh, cool. You be alive. Everything be fine. Aight, so, this here be the dealing biz. All your body functions be manual, so you kinda have to do stuff on purpose. 
Um, you be turning kind of blue. Might want to consider breathing. <gasps> All right, bitchin'. You be blinking and breathing. That be bitchin'. So, all right, go survive for a day, and I'll let you live normally for the rest of your life. If you somehow die within the next 24 hours, you'll go to hell and I'll keep your shreds forever. I'll be over there doing kick flips if in you need me. Once again, Sam has to make an effort to get up. This time, he has to focus on his spine. And, once again, he has to remind himself how to walk. Oh, by the way, dude, you be getting late for work. Sam does something that resembles walking toward the bathroom. Gonna do a kickflip now. Sam holds on to that toothbrush like his life depends on it. Sam has some trouble with his posture, and has to focus on his spine. With clean tea, Sam is dumb enough to breathe in with his mouth full of water. He has to cough. Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen. It's going to be a long day. Sam tries to take a leak. Hey, dude, have you seen my... Oh. Uh... How hard is it to blink, Sam? Sam takes a leak everywhere, including, but not limited to, himself. One empty bladder later, Sam moves on. Sam tries out a strange maneuver by stepping with the same leg twice. Sam tries to take a shower. He looks like a mantis that's trying to explain to someone how a bicycle works. Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen again. <sighs> Sam is clean as a whistle. Good job, Sam. Clean and empty, Sam decides to find some clues. Friggin' skateboard. Ah. Sam has some trouble with his posture and has to focus on his spine. He has to use his opposite leg to get up again. Hi, let's see here. <gasps> Sam can open doors now. Clever boy. Sam enters his wardrobe. What will he wear today? Sam has some trouble with his posture and has to focus on his... He picks a pair of blue jeans. The ugly ones. Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen. Again. Sam successfully puts on his pants. Feeling more accomplished than ever, he proceeds to find a jacket. 
Only the best one will do. He settles for a mediocre one. Humble. Fully clothed, Sam is ready for the day. P.S. He's not. You're impressing no one, Sam. He puts on his shoes, living the dream of having shoes on. Oh. Sam walks down the stairs with great precision. Sam decides to hurl himself down the stairs, apparently too used to hurling money around. Flappy Rooster is Sam's favorite game. He has no time for playing with a Flappy Rooster right now, though. Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen again. <sighs> Following this story at this time, and gang wars are still an escalating problem at Bridge Street, where the police are struggling to regain control. Commuters are advised to... Hey, Lucy! I'm home! Oh, hey, dude. Still alive, huh? There is a note saying, sent over a maid to make you breakfast. Don't breathe in while chewing. Love, Mom. Your spine, Sam! It matters! <gasps> Sam decides to try his luck on some coffee drinking. Sam's coffee is so hot, he blows on it before taking a sip. <laughs> Sam passes out from the lack of oxygen. Again. Sam drops the coffee, dramatically. Out of cups, out of hope. Sam hurls coffee into his eyes, for reasons unknown. He finally makes it out the front door, beaten, terrified, <gasps> stupid. Dude, I am totally gonna kickflip over your car. Oh, dang. Oh, man, that hurt. Dude, it was like that when I got there. You might want to get that hood fixed. It would be loose. Uh, yeah, um, I'll just get in the car, yo.
Hey, dude, I turned your automatic gearbox into a manual one for the funds. That'd be ironic or what? At this point, Sam notices that Dev isn't really a nice guy. I guess I should teach you how to drive a stick, huh? <laughs> Aight, so, when starting the car, you want to press down the clutch pedal. Nobody has clutched anything for years. Good luck, Sam. Now, while you have the clutch down, press the gas pedal. As you let go of the clutch, the car will start moving in bits. Good job, dude. You ain't as useless as you look, know what I mean? Now, to stop, you gotta move your right foot to the brake pedal. Left for us, he means. And obviously, press it down. Give stopping a go, dude. Nice! Now, start driving again, like I showed you. And obviously, you turn left and right with your arms. If you want to drive faster, you gotta use the stick, baby. To upshift, you press down the clutch and then yank the stick. <laughs> Obviously, you can't turn left when your hand be on the stick. So to turn left, you have to move your hand back to the steering wheel, y'all. And so Sam and the Lord of Damnation are on their merry way towards a new adventure. Together. Cozy. Dude, there be an old lady on the road. Yo, go through. We almost killed that lady. She ain't due for another... a few hours. Listen, if you kill somebody before their time because I messed up your motoring skills, I will be in deep feces, okay? So keep your eyes on the road. If you almost kill someone, I'll stop the car, yo. But then, you'll have to start it all over again with the clutching bids. Right? You'd be good to go. Anyway, dude, you're probably wondering why all this biz be happening to you. To tell you the truth, bro, it be all right, yo. Ah! Oh. Anyway, to tell you the truth, bro, it be all part of bureaucratic bull feces. The shreds of life you give to go left, bro. Stop! Homicidal maniac! The shreds of life you give to those gatekeepers to get into hell? Yeah, they be distributed between the bank of hell and Satan. Oh yeah, dude. The big S. Then, the bank of hell, the right dude? Holy feces! Anyway, then, the bank of hell distributes their share as salary among the citizens of hell. Do you know how much Sam passes out from lack of air? Notices. As I was saying. A little less than a burger flipper at Mickey Demons, yo, and a little more than an elementary school teacher. You know what I be saying? A pie. Never mind. A soul has one may what be that gray cloud in the middle of the road? Oh, feces! That'd be a whole school of old ladies! Get ready! Yo, go left! Ah! Right! Ah! Left! Ah! Right! Ah! Left! Ah! What be up with all those old ladies today, bro? Hey, Sam. You're never gonna make it to work on time with all these grannies everywhere, dude. What do you say we take a shortcut? Left, dude. And so Sam drives the car to a place he has never been before. A place called Bridge Street. Oh, 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 dude. I hope it be safe here. Hope there be no, say, crazy gang members here or nothing. No, really, though. Where be the crazy gang members? 
Oh, crazy gang members. Oh, excuse me, you be a crazy gang member? Ooh, don't you worry, I know where the crazy gang members be. To Death's surprise and Sam's relief, the gang members are lying dead on the ground. This is when Death notices a distinct silhouette in the distance. What be the deal, bro? Sam passes out from lack of air. No one notices. The silhouette is contention and enmity, bloodshed and hostility, strife and strike, struggle, battle, war. She is neither wearing dumb clothes nor doing kickflips. She is just standing there. After a job well done. Oh, holy feces, holy feces, it be her! I'll be my breath. Just be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Okay, just don't be yourself. Hey, War, how it be going, babe? Wanna hitch a ride in these sweet wheels? I tell the one that can't be killed, but will to can't be well. I'm fast right to say, still the dumb to slip it at all. I kill the one. Oh, holy feces, here she comes. Hey, girl, where to? Just shut up and take me to the metro. Aren't you supposed to, like, reap a bunch of people, you knucklehead? I was, I was. But then I got bored, so now I hang out with my buddy Sammy here. Ain't it right, Sammy? Stop here. Stop. <laughs> okay, let's go. So instead of guiding endless amounts of confused souls to the afterlife, you waste time with this dumb, ugly mortal. Stop here. Okay, we can go. Yeah. Hey, hey, you want a cigarette? Ugh, you are so annoying. You know I'm trying to quit. <sighs> Fine. Give me one. I hate you. Go right here. Stop here. Okay, we can go. Hey, guess what? I totally landed a kickflip today. Take a left. Left. Stop here. Okay, let's go. Wow, you really landed a kickflip? That's kind of hot. Yeah, or... Well, I almost landed a kickflip. You know, Famine can do a frontside kickflip. Such a show. Stop here. Okay, let's go. Ow! Oh, dang it, the grandma's be back! Yo, right! Ah! Left! Ah! Right! Ah! Left! Ah! Yo! Ah! Oh, I'd never be getting used to those grannies. Stop here. This is where I get off. Hi, right, babe. I'll see you around. Whatever. What you be looking at? Oh, snap! You be getting late for work, bro! Step on it as hard as you can if we gonna make it! Go, go, go! Yo, faster, faster! Yo, 
faster, faster! Almost fast enough, dude! Step on it! Almost fast enough, dude! Step- Oh! Feces! Stop! Stop! Uh. Feces! Did we kill somebody? Oh, please let it just be a rock or a hipster or something! Sam goes out the door to see what happens. He only has to follow Death's crying voice. Oh, God! Oh, no, no, no. Feces! This guy wasn't due. He wasn't due. What be I gonna do? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Sam, can I borrow your last shred of life? Blink twice and yes. All right. Yo, yo, yo. Let's do a deal that we can seal. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, slap your salmon 57 times in 24 hours or you'll be dead forever. Now, get out of here. <laughs> I just had to. Anyway, let's get out of here. Weird. It's another busy day in Robocorp Inc. where they produce automatic robots for fun, convenience, and most importantly, safety. Finally, Sam makes it to work. And only by having the most terrifying morning of his life. He waggles towards the entrance, still shaky after the events of his trip. <laughs> 